Jeez, what a drab, gray, hazy, muggy July weekend. There's no point in going outside, I'm just going to be miserable. And what's the point when I have air conditioning, a comfy chair, a working VCR, and a copy of this VCR golf board game by Epix? We'll hit the links without having to brave the elements on this week's unambitious episode of Mr. Belvedere. Boop, 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 boop. Sony Betamax. Its only purpose is to serve you. Although video recorders primarily intended for home use dates back as far as the 1960s, it wasn't until the 1980s where prices dipped low enough for the VCR, your choice of VHS or Betamax, to become a standard piece of equipment in the family living room. Finally, time-shifting programs was in the hands of the average couch potato. No longer would graveyard shift workers be forced to miss out on their new episodes of Quincy. Just set the VCR, leave it on, and watch medical examiner Jack Klugman solve crimes whenever it was most convenient for you. But why stop at recording your favorite programs? Stroll down to one of the dozen video stores that open up right around the corner from you and pick out your favorite film to watch from the coziness of your own Barker lounger. Who cares if it's a little on the salacious side? No one's around to judge you. And were you one of those families that had one of those monstrous console televisions with no remote, only a clunky dial with which to change channels? Well, the VCR has you covered there, as most units had a remote and built-in RF modulator. This means you could run that broadcast antenna through the unit and switch channels the infrared way, without getting up. Yes, the VCR was truly one of the greatest and versatile inventions of our time. And since it completely revolutionized the way we consume entertainment, Many enterprising individuals figure this device can do the same thing for board game night. The classic deduction game of Clue was one of the first games to throw the standard rules out the window in favor of pre-recorded footage and tons more complexity. The object of the game is to discover who are the murderers and victims, the room in which each murder took place and which weapon was used. We're going to play game one. Now uh, let's see. Ooh, three murders. Busy, busy. That's three victims, three different murderers, three rooms, and three weapons. That means to solve this case, you must complete the first three lines of this accusation. Nonetheless, this new novel way of playing a board game translated to healthy sales in an RIAA Platinum Video Award for Parker Brothers. If you think I'm a man in a robot suit, you've made a mistake. If you think I'm a robot in a man suit, you're correct. Before long, every company that even had a passing connection to home videos, board games, or both were coming up with their own VCR-based games. Some, like the aforementioned Clue, Candyland, and Hi-Ho Cherio, were existing games given new rules to incorporate the multimedia. Games based around pre-existing footage, such was the case with The Three Stooges, The Honeymooners, Commercial Crazies, and America's Funniest Home Videos, just to name a few were quite plentiful on shelves, considering it was much cheaper and quicker to throw together with a minimal need for new talent. Some VCR games were quite ambitious, albeit with incredibly convoluted rules that's on par with learning how to fly a helicopter. Okay, so here's what you should do to make sure you can go to the party tonight. First, pick your favorite color pawn and put it on the board space that matches. Remember, whenever you land on a get rid of a chore card room space, you can get rid of a chore card if you have the one that matches that room. If you land on a friend's color space, you can give her one of your chore cards. And if you land on your own color space, you can get rid of two chore cards. Say you've got a note card that says, act like a ballerina at 121. Keep an eye on the clock, and when the time is 121, choose a friend and then start acting like a ballerina. Uh, let's see, you're a ballerina, right? That's right. When you've collected all six get ready tokens and you've done all your chores, you can go directly to the front porch. First of all, before I go, everyone needs to roll the die, and the person with the lowest number gets to go first. And when they're done with their turn, they pass the die to their left. Left? Left? Who's left? Hi, Pumpkin. <laughs> Much simpler were the sports-based VCR games, such as VCR Quarterback, VCR Basketball, VCR WrestleMania, and the game we're playing today, VCR Golf. It would seem that for many of these games, the VCR tape stands in for the random element that would be achieved through dice or pre-printed cards. Except that it's not at all random, as the video cassette is very much linear, with no means of quick random access to specific points. 
It's like you're playing Monopoly with the chance and community chess cards stacked in a specific, unchanging order, and the rolls of the dice were predetermined ahead of time. Replayability is severely limited, assuming you even made it through the whole tape, seeing as many of these games were not very fun. It's a little wonder that many of these ended up in the backs of closets, barely used, eventually making their way to thrift store shelves for a couple of bucks each. All that being said, I don't have terribly high hopes in VCR Golf passing the time in any sort of fun or constructive way. But I sort of committed myself here, so let's just have a look at it. Why not? VCR Golf was released in 1988 by Epix, the company primarily known for many popular video games throughout the 80s, such as Impossible Mission, Pit Stop, Jumpman, Temple of Apshai, Gateway to Apshai, Purple Saturn Day, Summer Games, Summer Games 2, Winter Games, California Games, World Games, the movie Monster Game, Dragon Riders of Pern, Breakdance, and World Karate Championship, to name but a few. Oh, and the Atari Lynx. Also contributing to this package was ABC Sports, providing Epix with a tape full of the most thrilling golf shots ever conceived. The game comes packaged with a nice assortment of, uh, of goodies here. Top of the box, things are falling out. First we have a, uh, a flyer here that shows the other Epix VCR based games. Uh, they, had, they actually had a VCR California games, which is pretty interesting. Also a couple of audio only uh, sports games, probably not terribly fun. The rule book, as as you know, every game comes with. It comes also with nine nine port nine uh, nine uh, plastic not plastic nine glossy pages. That's the golf course with little lines here that you use for the gameplay. There's a nine nine of these sheets with two sides each that equals 18 holes. Of course, the the required VCR tapes uh, VHS format. Uh, four points, a couple of pair, uh, pair of dice, uh, a bunch of club cards that you play uh, along, the, along the way. I'll go over that later when we play around. And, of course, a scorecard that looks as if it's been played halfway through by its previous owner, and then they just gave up on life. Okay, so we have our VCR golf set up here. I've already dealt myself out four cards. Uh, just trust me, I did shuffle these. I, every player gets four cards. I have my pawn, my dice, and we're going to be playing at La Costa in Carlsbad, California. This is the ninth hole, par four. This is a 389 yard distance to get to the to get to the pin there. So let's start off at the tee here. Now, for our first move, we have to start with the VCR tape. I already loaded it up, and I have it all queued up on my TV here. Can't get the whole thing in one shot of the way I position my camera, because I really stink at doing things properly. But we're only concentrating on the drive, so let's start off. By the way, I'm moving around a lot here. Be Please forgive me. I am behind the microphone. Now I'm in front of the microphone. Here's our next shot. This is the drive. We are concentrating on the left quadrant since we're doing a drive. Okay, I landed on 260 to the right. So now I have to move my pawn 260 yards and I have to aim on the right side. So 260 is right here and I am in that I'm there. I don't know. So now that I'm past the approach line, which is right here, I'm allowed to either use the VCR to take my next shot, or I could use one of my cards. Now, I'm already kind of to the right here, so let's see here. I got a sand wedge, a 7 iron, a 2 iron. That brings me a little bit to the left. 200 yards to the left is going to put me at 460, which is going to overshoot me by quite a bit. Uh, chipping wedge, that's not going to help me here. We're going to have to use the VCR. We're going to be concentrating on the lower left-hand quadrant this time, the approach shot. And it pops up here. This is what we're concentrating on. Apparently something good's happening, but I can't tell. <laughs> okay, so the L3 means I have to put the marker over here. I, oh, let me... Get in the camera there. The marker goes over there. 
And now I'm at the approach. What stroke is this? Three? I believe this is the third stroke. All right, now from here, I could either take a, uh, a shot with my chipper here. Or let's see, chipping wedge. I'm going to use my chipping wedge card here. Move six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm on G1. Once I'm at G1, I roll one die. Putt's good if you roll a one, two, five. If you roll six, it's two strokes. So that was one, two, three. This will be my fourth stroke. I need a one, two, a five. And we got a one. Ball's in. Huzzah! Four strokes. I have par. Now after you finish this hole, it might be uh, of interest to just put this game away and pop in a copy of Hot Shots Golf 4 or any game from that series and just play that instead. VCR Golf, like all other sports VCR games, I suppose, is weird in that it takes an activity highly dependent on great skill and whittles it down to a luck-based contest. I don't even know if there's any real strategy involved with this game other than making sure you're not choosing a drive shot when you're supposed to be on the green. I can't imagine who would have even enjoyed this. Golf fanatics, I would imagine, have other ways of getting their fix when they can't make it onto the course. Indoor putting, home computer simulations, driving ranges, or even a subscription to Golf Digest. VCR board games never really died, they were merely replaced by the new technology of DVD. This time, the DVD added more interaction to many traditional games since these discs had instant random access, meaning higher replayability as there was no predetermined order of the footage. One particular series that found success with this format was Screen Life's Seen It, which had been released in a few dozen different versions. But as physical media is dying, so is the concept of packaging a tape or a disc inside traditional board games. Multimedia-based party games can be delivered relatively quickly to connected devices, allowing true interactive experiences without having to break out the head cleaner. If you'd like to hear more about VCR-based games, you may like to head over to episode 17 of the show where I discuss World of Wonders Action Max console. Also of interest may be episode 24. It covers Sue Shark for the Sega CD, but we started off by taking a look at how this game and Night Trap had its roots in the VCR gaming world. Links to both can be found in the description. And as usual, remember to like, comment, and subscribe before you pause the tape to move your playing pieces. See you next time. Market. I just wanted to make sure that everything's okay. It is great. And if anyone's practicing the piano or doing homework, you can now get back into the game.